Hello and welcome to RetroBreathe. In this video, you're going to learn how to play the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind on your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, along with some basic configuration to make the game more playable. If you want to try another, often forgotten Elder Scrolls game, check out my N-Gage emulation video which will show you how to play the Elder Scrolls Travels Shadow Key as well. Anyway, let's get on to Morrowind. Here are the basic steps we're going to take in this guide. First, we'll install the Open Microwave app, which is an open source engine that can run Morrowind. Then, we'll add the Morrowind game files to the app, and finally, we'll configure some settings to make the game more playable. It's a pretty simple and easy process. Now, there are some prerequisites that you'll need to do before you begin my tutorial. First, you'll need to have Morrowind installed on your PC, preferably from GOG or Steam. I recommend buying it from GOG if you don't have it already. Make sure you know where it's installed as well. Next, you'll need to have 7-Zip installed on your PC. 7-Zip will make it faster and easier to compress, copy, and extract the game files. And finally, you'll need Z-Archiver installed on your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. It's a free app and it's available from the Google Play Store. This app will help us to extract the game files after we copy them. Alright, now that you're all set with those, let's get on to the tutorial. First, we'll need to install the Open Microwave app. You'll need to download the APK file from the official GitHub page, and I've dropped a link to it in the description box below. Browse to the GitHub, click Assets on the latest version, and download the file that starts with omw underscore release and ends in .apk. Once it's downloaded, tap the APK to install it. You might need to provide permission to do this. Now we need to jump over to our PC and get the Morrowind game files. Make sure you have the game and 7-zip installed, like I said earlier. Open the Morrowind installation folder. For GOG, the default location is C, GOG Games, Morrowind. You can right-click the Morrowind icon on the desktop and select Open File Location as well. Now we need to compress a folder and a file in here to substantially speed up the copying of the game files. Click on the Data Files folder, then hold the Control key or a Command key on Mac, and also click Morrowind.ini so that they're both highlighted. Then right click, highlight 7-zip, then click add to morrowind.7z. After a few minutes, you'll have a compressed 7z file named morrowind.7z. Now, copy the morrowind.7z file to your Retroid storage or SD card. I recommend using the internal storage because it's a bit faster and more reliable. It will take a few minutes to copy over, but uh, if you hadn't have compressed those game files, they would take easily a day or more to copy, so just be a little patient. Once that is done, open the Z Archiver app on your Retroid and browse to your 7z file. Tap on it and tap extract to dot forward slash archive name to extract it to a new folder named Morrowind. Wait a minute or two for it to complete, then open the open microwave app. It will be listed as OMW Nightly or something similar in your app list. In the app, tap Game Files, then browse to the folder you just extracted and tap Select. Believe it or not, that's actually it for the installation. You can now press the blue play button to start playing Morrowind. However, there are a couple of tweaks we can do first to improve the experience a little. Scroll down and tap on-screen controls. Here we can customize the touch controls. In my experience, you'll need a few of these left on for convenience, but many of them can be disabled because the game uses the Retroid's physical controls with no problem. Tap a control to highlight it, then tap the alpha minus button to turn it invisible. In my experience, you can disable everything except the very top row, but leave the darker gray ones on the side here alone too, because we can disable those elsewhere. Go back, then tap UI Scaling Factor. You'll need to play with this a bit to your liking, but I find that it's pretty good at just a scale of 1. With 1, most UI elements are big enough to be used with touch, the text is legible to read, and nothing's too cramped. We are playing a 20-year-old PC game though, so the UI isn't ideal regardless, to be honest. Mouse mode in menus is another preference, but in my opinion, absolute touch controls works the most naturally. It basically means that your touch is registered wherever and whenever you tap the screen. Relative joystick controls allows you to control the cursor with the left stick when it's active, but I find it too fast to control. Hybrid will activate both at once, so just take your pick. Uncheck Hide on screen buttons, then check Always Show Top Bar icons. Now, it's finally time to start playing the game. Tap the blue play button to begin. You can then use the D-pad and the A button or touch to navigate the menu. In the game, you can tap the keyboard button to bring up an on-screen keyboard for text entry, and tap it again to dismiss it. Once you're able to control your character, press Start and go into Options. The main thing to do here is to tap Controls, then put the camera sensitivity toward the bottom, maybe a tenth or so to the right, or otherwise the right stick will be way too sensitive. Now tap Controller, and you can customize your controls to your liking. Every control on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus works just fine, except for the Home button, of course. Bear in mind you can't use L3 or R3 though. You can tap the screen to activate both on-screen buttons and in-game buttons too. When you open a menu, you can use touch to drag around the screens and pull the corners and edges to resize them. Once again, this is a PC interface. It's not ideal, but the game is definitely playable. 
So there you have it. There's more tweaking and personalization you can do here, but this video isn't necessarily a tutorial for how to play the game. So I'll call it a day for now and let you go explore Morrowind on your own. It plays very well on the retro, by the way, and it's just awesome to be able to experience a classic PC game like this on a, such a tiny device. Thank you very much for watching this video today. I'm thinking about making another video showing how to apply a handful of mods that improve this game on the Retroid, so let me know if, in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. If you like this tutorial, check out my Retroid Pocket 2 Plus N-Gage tutorial and my super detailed in-depth overview of it as well. And of course, leave a like and subscribe for more upcoming content. Have fun with Morrowind, and Retro Breeze, we'll see you next time.